to um, what I really wanted to just do. This is some of this information is which is part of the handout that I gave you. Um, I'm going to go through a little bit quickly, and then we're going to look at things you can do to your website. And one of the things that I believe you ought to do is to have a business plan. Now, when you're doing this is in dual career mode, the two primary ways in which you're going to get business are from people you already know, and that would include people you meet, right, which is a different thing, but also from open houses. You need to be somewhat purposeful about meeting people and following up with them. Um, the 90-day rule basically says that you, what you're doing now will probably have an effect in 90 days rather than right away. Every once in a while in an open house, somebody wants to buy a house. Usually you're, you're looking for things out. And this is just a little time thing I did. It may not be as relevant, but um, for people that are in dual career, the seven levels of communication, see how quickly we're making it through here, is the... Um, you need to understand that your the best way for you to communicate with people and bond with them and is on a one-on-one -on -one meetings. Events and seminars, that would either be one you're holding or one you went to, is next. Phone calls is next. Handwritten notes is sort of in this green zone in between influence and information. Electronic communication like email is somewhat further down. In other words, email is probably more effective at communicating data than building relationships. Direct mail and just general advertising. Um, and we want to spend most of our time at the top of this pyramid. Now, the name of the game is lead generation. I was discussing today with a about coaching somebody that I'd coached before, and then had gotten off on, she went and did something else, did something else, did something else. Told me she'd retired from real estate. Um, which, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Um, the, and, and when it came down to it in our discussion about, you know, should she give it another go, the, the real question is, is what are you going to do differently to develop clients? Because just because you're good at real estate and you may or may not think you're right now good at real estate, but when even if you're really good at real estate, it doesn't necessarily help you unless other people know you're good at real estate and actually want to engage your services. So uh, even in a dual career, you're going to need to focus on lead generation. Now, this is a discussion of the MREA models for generating leads and building relationships. We're going to go through a couple of scripts and I'm going to sh wander onto the internets and uh, <laughs> discuss um, how you can actually use some of the software to help you with this. Um, the Haven't Mets and Mets. Haven't Mets are the, what's in blue here, obviously, and that would comprise of the general public or a target group. What would be an example of a target group, which are people that you have not met but wish you were going to meet? Neighbors, you might have met some of them, but yeah, some of them. Could you focus on working with first-time home buyers? Yes. Could you focus on working with people that live in Morgan Hill? Yes. Could you focus with people that are into condos and townhomes? Yes. Right. So that's what we mean by target groups, a niche, a focus. And the idea of all this is that we want to move the blue into the white. The white are the people that you've met, and we've divided them into two groups, your contacts and allied resources. An allied resource is somebody, sometimes they're referred to as advanced advocates, somebody that would say, if somebody said, well, I'm thinking about selling my house, and the best ones will not even wait to be asked, but they'll say, oh, yeah, I know this guy named Johnny, you ought to call him, he'll do a really good job, you know, I've got one of his cards on me, right? Um, that's called an allied resource. So your strategy is to move people from the outer circles to the inner circles. Right? From the general public, find who is in your target group, into your con get them into your contact database, and then from the people that are in your contact database, find out who your allied resources are. 
Now, the way in which we would recommend doing this would be through two, there's a variety of different marketing patterns that is part of the MR, what does MREA stand for? Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Yeah, there's a, and by the way, if you're at a Keller Williams event and they ask, how many of you have read The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, just raise your hand, all right? <laughs> just, you understand? I, just go ahead and raise your hand. It's considered bad form to not raise your hand. So an 8x8 eight eight and a 33 touch, everyone in your MET group first goes on an 8x8, eight eight, which is followed by a 33 touch. An 8x8 eight eight is something once a week for eight weeks. Could be email, doesn't have to be. Could be a phone call, it could be a handwritten note. The better 8x8 eight eight campaigns are not, are not just all email. In the Keller Williams Market Leader E-Edge system, they have 8x8 eight eight campaigns, some of which are email, some of which are postcards, some of which are, well, emails or postcards. Uh, in the MREA, they actually talk about different kinds of 8x8s. Eight and a 33 touch is a longer, one year long follow up system which involves 33 touches. I think I, didn't I last week go through something about the sphere of influence? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Anyhow, a 12 direct is something that you would put a target group on, which is a once a month campaign to create awareness of your brand, which really means you. So if you, uh, if you had a group of people, let's say a particular area that you wanted to target geographically, then a 12 direct would be something you do once a month. And then prospecting and marketing general things would be to um, generate leads from the general public, prospecting and marketing. There's a lot of different things you can do. There's a lot of different ways you can get leads. You can buy them. I don't know if you knew that. You can take out your credit card and spend money and people will start sending you leads. Trulia, Zillow, Realtor.com and others. There's all different ways of doing that. We believe you ought to lead through revenue, which means get business before you start spending money. So. Having said that, you should have all of your contacts in one place. And what this is, there's even a, like a picture of a Rolodex on the right. But I've seen, no, I still see them. I see them. Yeah. I don't, I'm not wearing a watch either, which I found you can live without a watch too. Um, everybody that's in your cell phone, everybody that's in Facebook, then the next one, that looks like an Outlook screenshot you know and uh, I know people that you know Outlook is going to have to be pried from their cold dead hands uh, everybody that they have we need to get them all into one place which would ought to be E edge right ought to be E edge unless you want to pay for another system Okay, is this, this is good enough for you to read, right? I'll give you a hand. So once you've got them into E-Edge, you want to break them into groups. As you start to build, it's going to become a lot easier if you have people grouped in a particular way to contact them. Um, the general ways of dividing people, we have some suggestions here. Allied resources, which would be your A-plus contacts. Friends, good friends, family members that like you, people that owe you money, right, that are looking for, uh, you know, your A+. Plus. Haven't met would be, because the, 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 the idea behind grouping is, is that we group people in such a way that would reflect how we're going to contact them. There's other ways of doing it. And what I'm going to do, this talks about managing groups. This looks a little bit older. So what I'm going to do, this is what it looks like when you log in. And I'm going to go, basically, you can click on any of the first four and get sort of to the same place. Leads, contacts, listings, e-edge, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to click on view contacts just, uh, just because. Now, one of my suggestions would be, and I'm going to, even though I'm logged in as me and I don't really need these groups, I'm going to suggest some other groups that you might want to create. Now, you go to contacts and you go to manage groups. 
All right, is everybody with me on this? Contacts, manage groups. I'm recording this and it will be on the YouTube, the YouTubes, if we can say the YouTubes. Because the internet is like a series of tubes, I, I learned. A bunch of tubes. So we go to manage groups and you'll see I have a bunch of groups, which may or may not be relevant to you guys, but I have a bunch of groups. I have some groups that have over 2,000 people in them. Mm -hmm. So what we want, if you want to create a new group, you just click on it. And one way of creating a new group would be a 33 touch. Now, one reason that we might create a group that says 33 touch is because we want to put people on the 33 touch. And one way of doing this is by adding them into the group. You could um, call it a 33. Now, most of the 33 touch for sphere of influence are sort of mixed together. Either some buyers and some sellers, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it at that. Uh, another group that I would did I do this last week? The another group that I would suggest is a eight by eight buyers. Another group might be a eight by eight sellers, and then. There are other groups that we could use, right? For example, there's a 12 direct called This Month in Real Estate, which I always, T-M-I-R-E, right? And you could, that would be people that get that. And so people can be in more than one group. But what we want to do is to be able to um, put people into a, campaign and the best way to do that is if we first put them into a group step one get everybody into your database step two group the people that are in your database step three launch a campaign that would allow you to contact those people how are we doing is that brilliant no, maybe not. so All right, maybe I'll ask Johnny how, if he knows how that, why he does that. And no, sometimes when I'm on, on Windows 8, if, I, if the mouse is either down near this, that bar over to the right, a thing will pop up. Yeah. There's a search, and I would like it to happen. When I want it to happen, it never pops up. When I don't want it to happen, it's always there. All right, so we went through creating groups. Here's allied resources, buyers, have not met, target, general public. That's using the MREA, Met Sellers. Those are different ways in which you could group people. And the, I must have talked about um, sphere of influence last week, didn't I, a little bit? Okay. And I went through the five step process, you know, you contact, call them once a month, email them twice a month, right? I did, all right, cool. So you want to start with your immediate family and spouse, partner, friends, relatives the inner circle, and then there are other hidden circles that can be found by social media. So your friends have social media friends, and if you interact on social media, pretty soon they can sort of be brought into your web. Um, feeding your database every day, one of the things that you ought to do is make as a um, sort of a goal is to add people to your database. And these are just some examples. People that, uh, Mr. My, I don't know why I have his pictures on this. I, I borrowed this from somebody else. But does there, anybody know what this is referring to, this hand with the circles? It's a Google Plus. Google Plus, my goodness. And it says Google Plus circles over there. I guess I didn't. Why, now, Google Plus is, um, sometimes I, 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 at one point I'm going to go through social media. The value of Google Plus is not, oh, but let me it's put it, Google it's not Google Plus, right? It's Google. it's Google. There is a graphic that they showed at one of the things I went to recently, maybe it was Mega Camp, and it was like a cartoon, and there's this little kid crying, or these are like drawings, and standing behind the little, and the little kid that's crying, it says Google Plus, and standing behind the little kid is this great big guy, and it says, wearing Google. And the little kid is saying, you know, but nobody likes me. Nobody loves me. 
and the big Google says, don't worry, I will make them. <laughs> I will make them. And it's working. And it's working. And now let me just give you an example. Would you like an example? I'm sure you would love an example. Let's say I'm interested, say I'm logged into my Google Plus One. I'm interested in Summerlin, L-I-N-E, Summerlin Homes for Sale. All right, I'm just interested in Summerlin. I just happen to know if I scroll down, look at, uh, see that guy's picture that pops up? That's Albi Voss. Albi Voss. And that picture that picks up, that's Lori Ballin. Now, if I were to go to, let's say, this browser where I'm logged in differently, S-U-M-M-E-R-L-I-N, Summerlin Real Estate, and I type that in, and I scroll down, notice no Albi Voss, no Lori Ballin. Well, why are there pick Google Plus and Google Plus? So that what Google is using Google Plus for is search engine optimization. If you want people that you know to see things that you post, make sure they're in Google Plus. Because what Google will do is Google will realize that Kelly and I are friends on Google Plus, and when I post something, they'll, and she's searching, they'll stick it in front of her whether she wants it or not, right? So results in Google search engine that otherwise would not be seen will be seen in Google+. There it is again. There it popped up, and I don't know how to make it do it when I want it. That's why it's doing that. Um, so we want to get, do you understand, we want to get all people in LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter, and we want to feed our database every day. Now, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We want to feed our database every day. Now, th this is some scripts. These are some of the better scripts that I've seen on database. And first of all, this talks about database classifications. And it also has uh, a sample system. Advanced advocates are raving fans, vendors, or others that'll, that you target are sending two plus great referrals a year. If you could get 10 people that would send two referrals a year, you'd be doing okay, right? Advocates have sent business in the past, target to send one great referral. Now notice in here, send a monthly newsletter, meet face-to-face -face over a cup of coffee, etc. once a month. Remember my, that one, that group you'd want to meet more regularly. Advocates, business, target to send a one referral. So if we got 10 people that would send two referrals and let's say 20 people that would send one referral, we'd be doing okay. So um, send a monthly newsletter, call every two months, friendly database, they know you, like you, but have not sent you any business, newsletter call once a quarter, just names, send them a newsletter if you want. Now what we're not necessarily doing is talking about email, we're just talking about something else. And so the idea is to move the threes to twos and the twos to the ones. Actually, he thinks that you ought to get 30 people that'll send you a deal a year, then you would sell 50 homes a year. That's all. all right? in, our, in our market, you could live on it. You have to cut back a little. Uh, and you could double the numbers. One of the millionaire real estate agents interviewed by Gary Keller did uh, all of her business came from referrals. Century 21 agent in Santa Clara County, as a matter of fact. Um, I've been to know her. This is a script. <clears throat> Hi. Hi, Joe. This is Mike with Keller Williams. How are you today? I'm calling for a business reason or to say hi or because we hadn't spoken in a while, etc. And to ask a favor, have you got a minute? This year, now I like this phrase, I have set a goal to help. How many sales do you want to make next year? 52. One a week, that's, that's, that's doable. A friend of mine from Century 21 also was interviewed for the millionaire real estate agent. Um, did 300, he, was, he, by, he didn't have a team really. He did 389 closed transactions in one year. Now, now considering that the title companies aren't open on weekends and holidays, that means many days he was closing two transactions. So one a week, 
would seem easy, wouldn't it? That would, that would seem very doable. That would be doable. Um, I've said to go to help 10 families, 20 families buy or sell a home. Notice, is that better than saying, uh, I need to make some money and I'm, that's why I'm calling you? As you probably know, referrals are the lifeline of my business. Let me ask you an honest question. Do you feel comfortable referring someone to me as a real estate agent? If they say no, don't buy them a Christmas present or a birthday present, and I'm just kidding. But um, if they, they're they not active. In other words, one of the processes that we need to go through is to find out who's on our side and who's not. My mentor used to say, look for the people that are going your way. Not everybody's going your way. But, but do you believe that it's possible that we could waste a lot of our time worrying about and fussing over people that aren't going to help us anyhow? Right, and we might as we might as well know. Statistically, we know that we will run into forty six. We know you will run into forty six people, like friends, neighbors, or coworkers, who are buying or selling a home in the next year. Will you send them my way? And I know this isn't going to be the main thing on your mind. So, would you mind if I called every couple of months to remind you? Thank you for your support. Appreciate it. This is what you would say when you call them back. Right now, um, and then it, it the. Once you got somebody in a escrow, it is better to talk to them while they're in the transaction rather than waiting for it to, to end. Right? A lot of times people are happier once they're in contract than they are when it closes. And so there's a little script for that. All right? Scripts, scripts, scripts. So create an annuity by growing your database through your net. The four laws of a database, organize and build it, feed it every day, communicate in a systematic way, that's the 33 touch, and service all the leads. How big is your database? If it's less than 500, you might want to have a goal of increasing it by 50% in the next 90 days. If more, try to get to 1,000. If more than 1,000, get to 1920. I don't know why. It was a nice year, right? I don't know why. There's a formula there. And put 15 minutes in your schedule every day. Now, as an example, if you have 1,000 people in your database and you get a 5% return, that would be 50 closings. Right? Yeah. yeah. Why not? Um, those are haven't met, met, met circles. This is the same thing, only I've, there's been a few additions. Mets by category. I, I For those of you that like, Breaking it down, I wrote it down. That looks like uh, something else. Um, so, how am I doing time wise now? Uh, eh, okay. What I've also done, and this last material came from Tony DiCello, who is, I think, the director of MAPS, one of the big MAPS coaches uh, for Keller Williams. This next material was something that I put together elsewhere, and if I had unlimited amount of time, I would merge all of it into one beautiful, but I, I don't have that much time. So overcoming blocks to calling there, I realized over the years that not everybody wants to call their friends, family, and coworkers and have a conversation with them. Not everybody does. I'm, I was, I'm shocked. They're afraid that I, they, I don't want them to think that I, that I want something from them, although I do. I'm afraid they don't like me, and uh, they probably don't already. <laughs> uh, I don't want to be like a telemarketer, right? Well, I'm just, so overcoming, one of the things that you could do is to come up with some item of value, what's going on in the market, something that you might be able to give them. And now some of this is my language, right? By the end of the call, say something like, um, you know, you chat with them, listen with, say, oh, by the way, if you hear of anyone even whispering about buying selling a home, please give me a call with their name and number, and I'd be happy to send referrals to your business as well, right? Assuming they, they have one. Um, and after calling monthly, after mailing items of value, you'll begin to know your sphere of influence and they'll know you. A, B, and C's, this isn't, this is a very similar to what we were doing before with that, you know, very similar, it's just that, you know, you want to be in their stream of conscious. I, I actually thought I was more in their puddles of, of conscious, but I might have been I might have been right about that. Um, you want to be the first one they think of when they think when they think of real estate. Uh, when they run commercials on TV, do they just run them once during each show? 
Yeah, because uh, you could say, well, why? I've heard people say, well, why do that? Why do they run them all the time? They ran it once. I heard the message. I don't, why do I have to hear it again? It's the repetition that moves from being out of mind into into mind. Um, making contact. Ask them. I, I believe that it's better for you to say, to use the phrase, calling yourself a professional realtor, than I'm a real estate agent. Right? It's professional real. Or I just think it sounds better. Any friends or relatives have a need of a professional realtor? Um, now, these are my tips, which are not different that much, but I, I've put in my scripts that I used to use. So this is one of my scripts. Um, you meet people. This is the first step. You have to meet people. Whenever you talk to somebody, let them know you're in real estate. Make it a habit to work it into your conversation. The only way people in my profession come to know about people buying or selling real estate is for people kind enough to let us know when they hear of someone, could you help me out? Do you happen to know of anyone who might be considering buying or selling real estate? They say no. You say, well, here's my business card. If you happen to hear of anyone a buying, thinking of buying or selling real estate, will you keep me in mind? If they say yes, they've agreed to work for you. Is that right? Is that what they just did? That's right. And of course, since you're now, they're working for you, you need to manage them. Um, my belief is that um, if you, rather than just saying, well, here's my business card, make a specific request. Rather than saying, please send me referrals, I would use the phrase, build my business. All right? I think that sounds better. And I also would recommend that if they say, yeah, sure, I would look them in the eye and say, can I count on you for it? Right. Will, would we likely get more results if we made it a specific request and the, got them to say yes and said, can I count on you? And they say yes. Uh, when you see the same people again, they're going to have a sense of wanting to do something to help you. Hey, Susan, how's the real estate business going? Well, it's going all right, by the way. I want to make sure you still have my cards. Brochure, do you need any more? Uh, people have to hear from you at least six times before they even it starts to sink in. So step one was meet people. And I have some other scripts. By the way, I would practice saying these, right? If you're not smooth, if the words don't come to you, I would practice reading them and reading them until you knew what to say. Two, put them in your database. Three, send them a thank you note. By the way, I had this written down. E-Edge I added in later, but this was way before um, I, I learned about the Keller Williams sending them personal notes, right? But it was it's, it's an old school thing. Send them a thank you note. I want to thank you for saying you will keep me in mind when you hear of someone interested in buying or selling real estate. I really do appreciate your consideration. Hope to talk to you soon. Right? Why not? You, you, with this, we've spoken to them. We've given our business card. We've made a specific request. They said yes. We said, can I count on you for it? They say, yes, you can. We've sent them a note saying, thank you. Are our odds going up that they're actually going to do something? Get back personally to each person within two weeks and at least every 30 days. Work to build a friendly relationship. Thank them again. This one to say thank you again personally for saying that you gave me in mind. If you have anyone considering buying or selling real estate, the only way I can be successful in my profession is for people like you considered enough to keep me in mind when they run across someone considering buying or selling real estate. Since the last time we talked, have you run across anyone? Get back in touch with each person phone at least once every day, every 30 days and figure out if they're an A, B, or C. When you get something, be grateful. By the way, one, notice when someone gives you a lead, shower them with gratitude. Now, look how, the, I, look how this is worded. You know we would never have met if it hadn't been Bob. So what, that would mean, let's say Bob told Johnny to call me if he's thinking about buying a home. So I'm working with Johnny and he seems happy, right? So I say to Johnny, he's the buyer, you know we would never have met if it hadn't been for Bob. Would you do me a favor and make it a point to let him know I was able to help you and thank him for introducing us, right? So when Bob recommends that Johnny call me and then Johnny tells Bob, thank you for having, you know, referring Mike to me, 
I'm very happy. What do you think that's going to do to Bob's motivation in the future? Going to go up. Um, and then say to Bob, thank you, Bob. I wouldn't be successful in my career if it wasn't for people like you helping me. Thanks for your help. I really appreciate it. Why not? Never forget to stay in touch. Evaluate them. Uh, make sure that they're, you know, you, you might have to recruit more people. You always have to recruit more people. And now, how many of you got the email I sent out on the This Month in Real Estate Easy version? Yeah. Did, I'm going to make it a little fancier next time, but was that easy? No, wasn't I mean, it's a whole lot easier than starting from scratch and making the whole thing. Yeah. I did notice. Yes. Even after the end of the month. Right. Yeah. The numbers are different after the, a couple of days later. Really? One would think not, but the multiple listing service agents are updating records for a week to 10 days. Mm -hmm. In the old days, they wouldn't actually release the month's numbers until at least 10 days after the month had closed. Mm -hmm. right. it, it's true that it, if you ran the numbers at on let's say February 1st yeah. for January and then on the 15th there would be some differences right and so what I wanted to do what I've learned is I've, I've, I've shown people how to do the going in and modifying everything and doing all that so many times I mean I have videos I have proof that I've done this so many times but what I found is is that the vast majority of people that I'm working with won't haven't chosen to do it right yeah. Cool. Well, I just don't have as many of my database to email them to yet. Right. Well, <laughs> we need to work on that. You need to get people into the county, but it wouldn't hurt for you to have those statistics. And by the way, you could put it on Google Plus and Facebook and all these other things. It's a picture. Yeah, you know, it is. it's a picture. I think you have to change the postcard one because it doesn't have the VRE number on the front. That's what I did. So I was just doing the postcard. I was going to put that on all the social media, but I noticed it didn't have the VRE number. Right. Right. So, so you have to do the email. Right. I think that what and what I did for emailing it out was because if I made the email one, it would have my contact information on the bottom, which sort of defeats the whole purpose. So what I did is I just cut it off. So if you had a good email signature, then you wouldn't need you wouldn't you know it would all be there. All right. So what? Um, how does that, why does it do that sometimes, but not all the time? I just don't know. I, I'm mystified. All right, so were, th were there any, was that a valuable thing for us to go through? Mm 